everybody, Asian Action Actor here with another movie review. And today, I'm reviewing Wolver um, I mean, Bloodshot. Bloodshot the movie. They'll come for you. I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, let's be honest. It's just a Wolverine movie clone. Have you seen the trailers? What I'm gonna say is not really, um, not really a spoiler. If you've seen the trailers, you know. So Vin Diesel is essentially an unkillable, like, super soldier that can regenerate, which is his, like, primary power. And, like, no matter what you throw at him, he'll still keep coming for you and is going to get his revenge no matter how bloody it is. We've never seen this before, right? Come on, guys. It's just, it's just, it's just a Wolverine movie clone. It's just slightly better than X-Men Origins Wolverine. And it is better. It's... Because X-Men Origins Wolverine is extremely terrible. This is just average. Okay? This is like somewhere in between X-Men Origins Wolverine and The Wolverine. Which is actually genuinely good. It's not, an, it's not an amazing superhero movie, but it's good. This is just... It's a very generic Vin Diesel action movie. But it has a higher... Not really, because like... I was gonna say it has a higher budget than most, but not really, because... Most Vin Diesel action movies have decent budgets anyway, like Triple X, Fast and Furious. I don't think Vin Diesel has done a low budget action movie in like forever. I, th I think his name alone just prevents that from happening. So it depends on you how much you enjoy generic Vin Diesel action movies. But yeah, it's just Vin Diesel is Wolverine and he's out for revenge. That's as much as I can say without going into spoilers. Uh, which I am going to in three, two, one. All right, spoilers, everybody. You have been warned. If you cared enough about being spoiled about this movie. I wasn't kidding. This movie is like average as heck. And you can just easily like guess my score because of that. Um, so, Vin Diesel, okay, he's already Wolverine, that's his, like, power set and what he's all about, but he doesn't have claws, so what does he have? He, instead of having the claw thing, um, like you see in the trailer, and it does look cool, I will admit, the few times it happens in the movie, it does look cool, but I mean, we're past that, this was, like, mid-2000s things, it was, like, I would love Ghost Rider. This was me like back in like 2003 or 4, whenever the first Ghost Rider was. I still hated the movie, but I loved it whenever he became Ghost Rider. All right? Nic when Nicolas Cage became Ghost Rider. Because we didn't see a lot of that back in the day. You know? That sort of special effect. Like, oh, he's Ghost Rider. He looks exactly like he does in the comics. But it's 2020, man. We've gotten like 12 years of Marvel, Avengers Endgame, and things like that so just seeing Vin Diesel reassemble himself all cool like in red lighting with the nanotechnology like four times in the movie is not that special anymore if this was back in like 2005 ish like I mentioned this would be amazing maybe I'm not sure <laughs> But it would have had a better chance then. Which you can say for a lot of movies, but I guess more so for this one. Okay? The story is extremely generic. Um, okay, so not only do they lift the Wolverine thing, um, they also left the Universal Soldier thing. Because he's an undead soldier. He's a soldier that gets killed and is brought back to life using nanotechnology. So you combine Universal Soldier and X-Men Origins Wolverine and you have this movie but just starring vin diesel that's it okay so that's the whole movie oh okay here's the thing also actually the movie has a very interesting twist that was unfortunately spoiled in the trailers in the second trailer i believe 
So in the second trailer, it's revealed that he was being used by the organization the whole time. Okay? Now, two things. One, do not spoil the only twist this movie has in the trailers, for God's sake. Second of all, mm, yeah, in my opinion, it was revealed in the movie too early. But then again, it doesn't matter because it was foiled in the freaking trailers anyway. God. Also, the bad guys are just bad guys. Like, they don't have any other motivations other than being bad guys. There are, there are two main bad guys here. One is the scientist bad guy, which apparently wants money. That's why he's bad. And the other is his, like, bodyguard slash number one soldier boy what was his gimmick because vin diesel can regenerate there was the girl kt who can essentially is essentially mira from aquaman there's so yeah nothing in this movie is original um what was the other dudes i i forget he was so generic and forgettable like the soldier dude i, th I think he can like oh all right like he can um he can he has like artificial legs so that that part is interesting actually because they're all like soldiers that can't be normal soldiers anymore because they when they sacrifice themselves for the good of the country the united states um they lost something so vin diesel lost his life kt lost his like um uh what do you call this uh like she can't hold her breath underwater anymore or something like that. Like her lungs are damaged. Now her lungs, you know, she can breathe underwater with like bionic implants. And evil soldier boy got his like legs taken away. So he has like artificial legs, which is a real thing in this day and age. Uh, but exaggerated to the point here. Interestingly enough, he very rarely uses his actual power, like his Quicksilver powers. He uses other guns and sort of power armors to fight Vin Diesel, which is kind of lame. Like, because. Uh, um, instead of being creative with this one character, with what he has, with what he has been established to be, you make him more generic by just, you know, giving him halo guns and, I don't know, second-rate Iron Man power armor, whatever it is. So, lame. Uh, speaking of characters, Lamorne Morris's Wilfred Wiggins definitely steals the show. So this is the character, like I said, like they revealed the twist, which was already spoiled in the ending, during the first half of the movie anyway this this uh wilfred wiggins character is a hacker and he's ex he's a british hacker and he's extremely funny that's all i'm gonna say like i don't recall a lot of his jokes or the things that make him funny off the top of my head but trust me when i say that watch this movie if you like generic vin diesel action things and you know the comedy for this guy watch it for this guy Mostly, aside from the, you know, how much you like Vin Diesel action things. Um, he's extremely funny. And if he wasn't there, the movie would just be an absolute snooze. Except for the few fight scenes that are actually nice. There, you know, the, the, the one fight scene that they hi highlight in the trailers with all the red lights and Vin Diesel regenerating his cheeks and things like that. Yeah, that, that's a great scene. But it just says something about a movie like this when the comedy relief is the best part of the movie and not the star or the actual action scenes or whatever else, right? So, mm. um, Bloodshots. I'm trying to remember because I keep getting him confused. What am I talking about again? Am I talking about Hugh Jackman's Wolverine? Van Damme's Universal Soldier? Oh, no, 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 right. We're, we're talking about Vin Diesel's Bloodshot. Who he does not resemble throughout the movie he's just vin diesel with like red eyes sometimes he doesn't have he doesn't even have the red eyes all the time he only has them sometimes he, they 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 make up this like i mean there's there's a thing near the end where he resembles the character a lot well with the red circle and everything like that in the middle of his chest and it's a it's a really cool scene near the end of the movie with like a lame payoff Lame and predictable payoff. But it's cool for a few seconds, I guess. And he does look like the character with his, like, his skin becomes all pale. And he has like the red circle there when they're overclocking the nanites or, or whatever bullshit. So that's cool. That's it. Aside from the fact 99.5% of the movie, he just Vin Diesel. 
He's just Vin Diesel trying to be Hugh Jackman, which is kind of sad if you think about it. Mm. Uh, speaking of Vin Diesel, he said in an interview or two that this does connect or establish the rest of the Valiant cinematic universe, which every franchise wants to have, right? Because Marvel. And I don't see how. I don't see how. Oh, no, uh, honestly, okay, fine. You can see how probably something like Exo Manowar can fit into this because of all the tech. And I'm not the biggest Valiant universe fan but i do enjoy them because my primary comic collecting history was in the late 90s oh sorry late 80s until like the mid 2000s then i stopped comic collecting for about a decade for almost not really uh, i stopped comic collecting for about half a decade then i went back into it and then caught up with stuff that i missed like marvel civil war and things like that uh, infinite crisis but during the 90s, when I was super huge into comic books still, I, I, I liked Valiant. I liked the variety of these superheroes because I love superheroes. And every once in a while, yes, I would buy an Exo Manoir or a Solar or a Ninjak. Ninjak was my favorite because Cyborg Ninja. Bloodshot, I didn't like so much because he was just pale Punisher. You know, he was like, he's just... A slight, he's just Punisher. And I was like, I, I wasn't even that big of a fan of the Punisher. So, yeah, I like Ninja, Solar. Exo Manowar, not so much, because I, I thought he was just a lamer version of Iron Man. So, in my Valiant, com in my very minuscule Valiant comics collecting career, I was only really a fan of Ninja and Solar. Uh, I know Solar was like a lamer version of Captain Atom anyway. But I liked him enough to not count him as that. Although in the back of my head, yes. Ninjak was the one that rose above the rest because like there aren't nearly as much awesome ninja superheroes out there as there can be. Daredevil, sure, but he's not. He doesn't have that very specific ninja aesthetic, you know, about him. He's still dude in tights. Ninja Turtles don't look like, you know. Because when I think of ninja superheroes, they're not exactly superheroes. But I think of Sub-Zero and Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Which, as a lot of you know, are like... Sub-Zero is probably my favorite ninja of all time. Right? And, yeah. And here I am in a Bloodshot movie being more hyped for another superhero. Because that's just how average this movie is. And again, could... We got off on this tangent because I was talking about how this might connect with the Valent universe. And I'm like, they're going to really struggle with this because this was a pretty terrible start. They kind of like stumble at the finish line here. I mean... It, it was not going to be Iron Man anyway. But, man, this is not an inspiring start for the Valiant Cinematic Universe. If ever that's still going to be a thing, you know? Mm. I still want these other movies to come out. Solar, Exo, Ninjak, and other dozen Valiant properties that I, I, I've forgotten now. Because I haven't like connected with these characters since the 90s. But, yeah. So, average as hell, right? 5 out of 10. Very predictable. Sorry, my review was just as predictable as the movie itself. But if you made it all the way through to the end and you watched all of that crap, thank you very much. This has been Asian Action Actor. I'll see you next time.